So let's have some considerations. What did we say about fixed first law? We said it relates J, flux, weights, diffusion coefficient, and the so-called concentration partial differential with respect to location or concentration gradient. In one dimension, we write it down as this. Right? That's what we have. JB minus D, partial differential of concentration with respect to X. Fixed first law. And normally dB is a positive number. Normally, in most cases, dB is a positive number. Which means what? Which means if along my x direction, my partial differential is negative. Along the x direction, partial differential is negative. The concentration is decreasing. Then the diffusion is along that positive x direction. On the other hand, if along my positive x direction, my partial differential is positive, it means what? Along x, my differential is positive, it means it goes higher, then the diffusion actually flux goes, it's a negative number, it means it goes backward. Make sense? So this is our fixed first law. And we said the diffusion coefficient, in this case, we have so far been talking about what types of diffusion? Interstitial diffusion, diffusion coefficient, we give it as 1 over 6 gamma alpha square. It has a strange unit of alpha square, meter square, times gamma over second, because gamma has a unit. Gamma is what? Gamma is successful jumping frequency. Frequency has a unit of 1 over second, or hertz. So this is diffusion coefficient, okay, that's what we have. And what's the impact of some, let's say, lattice structure? So far, our model, we derived our model based on, remember that simple drawing, it's based on simple cubic lattice. But in reality, very few materials, solid materials are simple cubic lattice. Quite often, we are dealing with either FCC for face centered cubic or BCC for body centered cubic. Okay. Do they apply? Hmm. What people derive is they are still applicable. This equation is roughly still applicable, but it needs some more derivation. And for time's sake we will not go in there. Okay? That's lattice structure. What if the material is not cubic? Non cubic. HCP rhombohedral, whatever. For those cases, do these apply? Well, not exact, because for those, because it's not century symmetric, you can imagine the diffusion coefficient would be along different crystal structure direction, they would be different. And of course you see, the model can get more and more complicated, but for time's sake, we stop here. We stop at the simplest one, but to understand, okay, from atom, random jumping point of view, how do we relate a global parameter, so-called diffusion coefficient with lattice parameter or jumping distance and successful jumping frequency, okay? And there would be some other impact of this diffusion coefficient. One thing would be solute concentration. We said, okay, we are dealing with interstitial atoms within the host material. The interstitial atom is also, we can call it a solute within a solution, or solute within solvent for chemist, right? And what people find is, okay, if the concentration range is small, we can assume that D means diffusion coefficient is a, read to yourself, constant. When the concentration change, well, let's say change, concentration change, it's relatively small, we can assume the diffusion coefficient is constant. However, over large concentration range, I'm going to give an example, over large concentration range, if the concentration from one location to another location changes 
significantly, then we cannot even assume the D to be constant. It's actually it may change for different concentration. The diffusion coefficient may change for different concentration. That's a complexity. That's a complexity. And how much change? We give one example. This is DC for diffusion of carbon in well. Iron. What types of iron? We say gamma iron, which is an FCC structured iron, austenite structure. At what temperature? 1000 degrees C, pretty high temperature. Okay, what people in reality measured is this 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. What unit? Remember, meter square divided by second for this 0.15 weight percent of carbon. On the other hand, they found, okay, when the concentration is 10 times higher, from 0.15 weight percent to roughly 1.4 weight percent, the diffusion coefficient actually increased by roughly three times. So you see, okay, within a small concentration range, we can assume the diffusion coefficient to be more or less the same. But over large concentration range, actually not very large, not very large. You cannot even assume that. You cannot even not assume that it may change by three times. But on the other hand, quite often within an order of magnitude, they are still roughly the same. Do you see my point? They are still within an order of magnitude change. What people find is the diffusion coefficient measurement is not that accurate. You cannot do, okay, 1.1 versus 1.2. Quite often you don't do that. Quite often it's between 1 versus 10 versus 100. Will you see my point? So it's whether change or depend on how precise you want to be and how critical you are concerned with your actual situation.